Hi everybody, this is Jonathan Sampson with a Pin2. Um, I'd like to show you a tool today called Fiddler and exactly how I use it um, when I'm answering questions on Stack Overflow or on Twitter uh, or trying to give someone some support online in general. Um, this of course is our website at Pin2.com. The, the tool can be downloaded from Fiddler2.com uh, and as it says in the header, it is a web debugging proxy. So essentially this tool, it intercepts files that are coming to your browser as well as requests that are leaving your browser. And so it acts as a middleman. And so if you go to uh, a website, for instance, fiddler.com, and your browser uh, fires off that request, which eventually lands on the Fiddler server, the Fiddler server starts to send you down first the index file and then all of the JavaScript and CSS files that are associated with it those will all go through this web debugging proxy before they get to the browser. Now the cool thing about this is it lets us modify remote files on remote servers that we have no access to as though they were files on our own server or just in a local directory on your computer. So this uh, particular application has come to us by way of uh, this gentleman here, Eric Lawrence, who now is with Telerik, I believe, where he's working full time, if I'm not mistaken, on uh, developing Fiddler even further. He was with Microsoft for you know a, a number of years, uh, but be sure to stop by and tell him thank you for all of his hard work once you fall in love with this application because I'm sure you will. So what we do is we go to Fiddler2.com, download the application. Uh, there are a couple add-ons that you might like. You don't really need to worry about those right now, um, but we're going to go ahead and fire up this application. This is what it looks like right out of the box. You'll notice we have on the left side, a panel of sessions. So these are going to be individual requests and responses um, going to and from servers. On the right side, we have a series of regions where we can do some more specific stuff. For instance, we can filter the sessions that we see on the left. We can filter those based on the domain name. Um, we also have this thing here called autoresponder. This is what we're going to be looking at today. Now, you probably know that in all modern browsers, for the most part, you have a series of de developer tools. Now, I happen to be using Internet Explorer 10 here, and I can view my tools by pressing F12. This, of course, gives me a view of the current HTML, the CSS. I can uh, it, it, interact with the page via the console or see some output there. The scripts on the page, I can profile the application to see how well it's running. And last but certainly not least is the network tab. And what this does is it's kind of a Fiddler Mini inside the browser. And so if I were to click Start Capturing, and then I went back to a pin2.com, you'll notice that it fills up the network tab pretty quickly with a bunch of requests. It tells me the type of file it is, how big the file is, uh, how long it took to request it, where it was initiated. Um, you know, for instance, these are all initiated by link tags and in general how long it took to pull it down and everything. So this is all really great information, but it's even better when I can manipulate that stuff. So for instance, if I were to check the version of jQuery that is being used on a pin2.com, I would see that it's jQuery 1.8.3. Now I happen to know that that's not the latest version of jQuery, which doesn't matter. You don't update things unless you need to. Um, but suppose I had a tool on this website or a carousel or some type of jQuery plugin and I wanted to see how well it worked with jQuery 1.9. Now, I happen to have already downloaded jQuery 1.9. You can get that yourself from jQuery.com, 1.9.0. And uh, what we're going to do is just go into Fiddler and actually swap out the jQuery version um, without having to ever go to the append to server. So this is cool. Now. Keep in mind that this is dealing with my local copy of this file. When we do this work on uh, the server files, which actually is not the server files, it's copies of the files from the server. When we do this work on these files, we are not touching the actual files on the server. So you don't have to worry about messing up the experience for anybody that might be visiting your website. So the first thing I want to do is um, we're going to just clear out all the sessions here and we're going to refresh a pin 2 so that we can see all the different types of requests that come in. And you'll notice they're all coming from this host a pin 2.com and then here's one from ajax.googleapis and this happens to be the one that we are actually most interested in because this is our copy of jQuery 183. 
So I'm going to come over here to the right side to the autoresponder and we're going to click enable automatic responses. And this is going to let us substitute data um, for the data that's coming back from the server or in this case from ajax.googleapis.com. We can then manipulate that in transit. Uh, we're going to go ahead and click on unmatched request pass through. That means that we don't have to have a matching URI in order to accept the file. We are going to be uh, using some URI patterns to manipulate certain files, but we don't definitely want to, don't want to make that exhaustive. So what I'm going to do is first start out by decoding this selected session. You could even, because this is a minified file, you can make JavaScript pretty, which expands it all out. And then I'm going to pull it over here to the right side, and you'll notice that we've got now this little bit, uh, this small expression that looks for the exact URI. We can click in here and do edit response. At this point, we can see, of course, the headers that come down with this file. We can look at the text view and the syntax view. You might as well just always be in syntax view if you're dealing with JavaScript. Now, at this point, you'll notice we're looking at the actual source code of this minified jQuery file. So if I were to come in here and do something like console log foo, I've now just added a new statement, uh, a new instruction to this copy of uh, the minified Google API uh, CDN version of jQuery. And so I'm going to close this and I'm going to commit these changes. You don't have to close that, just pressing save is sufficient. But now I'm going to come back and I'm going to refresh this page. I can actually clear out this history here. You notice we, we have not cleared out this rule uh, whenever we get this request coming from Ajax or this response coming from ajax.googleapis.com, we are going to respond with our own custom file. And so we now have no sessions over here on the left. I'm going to pull up a uh, pin to again. Now watching the console down here at the very bottom, you notice there's that foo output. So we have just given the, it seems as though we have just modified the file on Google's CDN, which we know we've not done, but we have modified a copy of it. We have that modified copy local on our machine. And anytime our browser requests the copy from the server, we just slide in our local copy kind of under the radar. So you can modify scripts that way. So if someone was having a, a JavaScript uh, syntax error, which I saw today. I was trying to troubleshoot a website for IE7 and there was a trailing comma which was causing problems for IE7. IE8, 9, and 10 were all doing just fine. Um, I didn't have access to the JavaScript file though, so I had to use Fiddler to go in there, experiment, took out that, that uh, trailing comma, refreshed the site, worked perfectly in IE7. So what we're going to do now is, um, you know, we could come in here and modify this even further if we like. But instead, I'm going to come down here and my response is going to be uh, to load a file. So we're going to go to the desktop. I've got jQuery 190 and I'll press open. So now you know, uh, you'll notice that if the request URI matches this pattern on the left, exact Ajax, Google APIs, Ajax, Libs, jQuery 183, jQuery MinJS, then we're going to respond with an actual file on our computer. Not some cached copy, but an actual file. So I'll click Save. Now we're just going to make sure again that we are um, looking at jQuery 1.8.3. So now if I refresh this, I'll notice something. We're starting to see some errors. So. We know that jQuery 1.9 has dropped support for jQuery's live method. You're supposed to use uh, on or delegate, depending on the version of jQuery that you're using. And so we now see that the Nevo slider is busted in 1.9. Um, but just to confirm that, we're going to do jQuery function jQuery. And sure enough, we are loading jQuery 1.9.0. So if a pin 2 were my site, and I'm responsible for managing it, I now know that we have certain dependencies on the site that are going to break if we upgrade to 190 and I don't have to find that out by going into the server and actually just switching the site over to 190. I can actually find this out before I cause complete mayhem and catastrophe for all of our visitors. So this is, I actually didn't even plan this, this is a perfect example of just how useful Fiddler's web debugger is. And so 
if you're planning on upgrading your site to jQuery 1.9 or if you're using Knockout or, or Dojo or anything like that, always check to see how things work before you make those changes. So this helps in kind of uh, library migration. It works in framework migration. And it also works anytime you're just helping people online with their own sites on their own servers. And so that is the Fiddler Web Debuggers autoresponder feature. Um, again, it's really amazing. I, I cannot thank Eric Lawrence enough for investing his life and time into this application. I hope you'll stop by on Twitter, follow him, and let him know at Eric Law that you appreciate all of his hard work. Thank you so much, Jonathan Sampson from Pinto again. Thank you for watching.